Uh, this is my character in Second Life, Ryata Tereshenko. In the virtual world of Second Life, this is uh, my Second Life Star Wars roleplay sim, New Tibanopolis Bespin. We're in a station above the planet, and this is one of the many Star Wars starships I have built. Uh, and most Star Wars fans, I will assume, will recognize this as the Slave One. The proper name is the uh, KSE Fire Spray 31. A ship that flies very odd. Uh, I have to treat these videos as if uh, viewers are seeing them for the very first time, which they most likely are, having not seen any of my other videos, I would assume, and explain what I'm all about here. I want these ships to be very authentic, so I add a lot of things in these ships that may seem uh, kind of silly and unnecessary. But uh, Second Life is full of these sort of things. I mean, we don't really need beds. We, have, we don't need houses. We don't need seats, right? We don't need... Why do we need different hairstyles? Why do we need changes of clothes? Why do we need different skins for the avatars? Well, it makes it fun. It makes it more authentic. So I do that here. Um, one problem with ships in this medium of Second Life, it's real-time streaming media. And games and movies tend not to have this limit. Uh, at books, uh, movies, television, they don't have the limits at all. Uh, and even games often do not, like, take Star Wars The Old Republic, a game I enjoy. Uh, your starship there, you'll notice if you play the game, when you enter the ship, you get a loading screen. It's because you're not actually entering the ship. You're entering a separate world space, a separate game cell. What this means is that the interior that you're going into does not have to fit into the exterior and rarely does. Uh, movies do this all the time. They will have a separate exterior model, whether it's real or uh, CGI, and an entirely separate interior. They, and the interior will not fit within the exterior. They don't have to, and they don't impose that limit upon themselves either. Uh, we do not have that freedom here. Uh, this ship is not too much of a problem in that way. Other ships are very, very bad that way and need a lot of changes inside. Uh, I'll go, I go over that in some of my other videos on some of the other ships that I've built that are particularly egregious offenders in this sense. So, the only problem I had with this ship was that uh, it's a common problem, is that I go by the blueprints, of course, I want these things to be authentic, uh, but the blueprints are almost universally way too small. The blueprints, just like everything, you know, this is all fiction, this is all made up, but the blueprints are often made just, uh, you know, they're, they're just made for books, uh, you know, like, you know, cutaway books and things, and they end up being far too small, almost all the time far too small. So I built a few versions of this ship, in the past, and they were all too tiny because I filed the blueprints. So what I did is I went and looked at Attack of the Clones, where Jango Fett is boarding the uh, Slave One on the planet of Kamino, and that gave me the proper scale for the ship, and this worked out uh, very well when I did that and just discarded the dimensions of the blueprints. So, open the door, eh, close the door, it'll close by itself anyway. I add, like I said, a lot of things that are unnecessary, like, uh, well, you know, what the hell is this, these lockers, I mean, this is the... Uh, Star Wars Auto Chef, the ships are supposed to have that. Keep in mind, these ships are supposed to be ships that can cross the galaxy. They're made to stay in space for long periods of time, and they become a home, uh, which is what I make them as. So I add the Star Wars Fresher, which all the really good deck plans feature, which is essentially the Star Wars bathroom, which is, of course, entirely, uh, you know, <laughs> entirely useless. You don't need it. But to me, it adds to the authenticity, so I add it. Uh, down here, we have the... Uh, we have the cargo hold, which on the deck plans is impossibly small. You can even walk in it, so I made it bigger. I go up here, and although the doors close themselves, I'm going to close them myself. And up here, we have the uh, we've got the flight deck up here. Uh, there's not a lot to the interior of this ship. This was not a luxurious ship by any means, but the coolest ship ever. And this is the pilot's cabin here. Uh, that pose ball there is a uh, workstation. It gives you some uh, work animations if you want to use that. It serves as a seat too. Remember that this is a, these are non-physical ships, so even passengers have to be seated while in flight. You know, your bed. There's a weapons rack over there just for cosmetics, and uh, down here hyperdrive and cooling pipes. Uh, let that door close, and now we'll take a brief little flight here outside of uh, our station, which is over New Tubinopolis Bespin. We're now in a space station, and uh, you can just you can either left click on the pilot seat or just right click and sit on the 
on the ship and you'll be seated. Now this ship does fly odd because it goes vertical, as you probably well know. And the movement controls in Second Life are hard-coded. These are not things that are amenable to scripting changes. So, for now, while you're in the horizontal configuration, everything works as you would assume. But if I put my mouse cursor just below the cockpit glass and click it, we will go into the vertical flight configuration and the uh, wings will rotate. Uh, I add this camera HUD to all of my ships. It's mostly useful for the Slave 1 here. If I click on this, it will shift our point of view. So you can, you, know, you can easily switch between these two views, depending on what you like when you're flying. So now what happens is that the page up key, which normally, let me go back like this, I'll go back horizontal for a moment, page up will make you go up, page down will make you go down, and then the uh, forward and back keys and the left and right keys. But when we go vertical, uh, Second Life does not care what we do. It will do what it wants. So now what happens is that the back key will make us go up, the forward key will make us go down, page up will make us go forward, and page down will make us go back, and left and right remain the same. But uh, essentially, Second Life is still treating the ship as if it is not rotated. And uh, it, there's really not much to do about that. Uh, I quite enjoy flying the ship, though. It is really a weird ship to fly, but you get used to it really quickly. At first, I thought, ew. But then, it really grew on me. There's Bespin below us. And uh, that's about it for this ship. This is really one of my favorite ships. Maybe my favorite ship from Star Wars. I do tend to like ships that are bigger than this. I mean, this isn't actually a tiny ship. But I do have a, a real... Uh, a real liking for large ships, kind of large freighters and cargo ships and, and yachts. But this is just one of the coolest ships in science fiction ever. I just love this ship. I just love this thing. So that's about it. And I will be off to make uh, yet another video on one of the uh, other Star Wars starships that I have built in the virtual world of Second Life.